You may want to leave your house a little earlier this morning. Several roads are closing starting today. By this summer, downtown Spokane alleyways could see some drastic improvements. This morning, we have more on a new project and how you can get involved. You can do some good for your community this month. Spokane Gives kicks off today. Good morning, everyone. 5 a.m. now on this Monday, April 1st. I'm Brittany Bailey. Jen York is off this morning. People in central Washington may have a phone outage this morning. Now, the outage affects landlines with Frontier Phone Company in George. It all started just before 10 last night. Authorities do recommend that you use a different phone with a different company if you do need to call 911. Frontier is working to fix that issue, but we do not know how long that outage will last. We will keep you updated, though. Now we want to check in on our forecast as we kick off another week and an entirely new month. Can you believe it, Evan Arani? April is it. here. It is here, and uh, with it, we're actually starting off our month very spring-like. We've got uh, mainly dry conditions today into tomorrow, but by the time we get to Wednesday, of course, some showers on the way. We'll talk about that in a second, but your 12-hour forecast looking pretty great. You can see uh, just partly cloudy skies, pretty high-level cloud cover is what we're looking at uh, for the remainder of your day. We do see temperatures even making their way to just about 60 degrees in the afternoon. A couple spots are going to cap out in the upper 50s to end the day. We're not looking at any major breeze outside today, so pretty calm winds. Satellite radar showing no indication of rain or snow around the region, so another dry and mild day. But what we are tracking is just a little bit of fog this morning. So we do have uh, some limited visibility up toward the North Idaho Panhandle. We are at seven miles of visibility in Sandpoint, although just about a half hour ago that number was down toward the single digit, so or toward uh, less than uh, one mile of visibility. So we're still tracking these numbers. And there is, of course, the capacity and the likelihood that within about the next hour and a half, we'll see fog thicken before it starts to burn out once the sun comes up. So uh, tracking these conditions outside, but aside from that really calm start to our day and uh, very mild conditions outside. 36 degrees right now at 501. And uh, I'll send things over to Cody Crawford uh, for a check of traffic to start off the morning. Hi, Cody. Good morning. I want to remind drivers of a construction project happening in the north side of Spokane. Spokane... Spokane Falls Boulevard will be closed from North Lincoln Street to North Monroe Street. Crews are working on installing sewer overflow tanks in that area. Drivers are required to take a detour east or west of Main, uh, Main Lincoln, or west at Main Lincoln. Uh, that is all the updates I have, but if you have any questions, you can head on over to our website at crim.com. And I'll send it back over to the studio. Cody, thank you. Well, you may have to find a new route to work this morning. The Hamilton on-ramp to Interstate 90 westbound is closed starting today. Washout leaders say that closure is to make repairs. Crews will remove the first of the deteriorating bridge deck on April 8th. Now, once that is finished, they will pour new concrete in the, its place. The on-ramp is scheduled to reopen early this summer. Three other construction projects around Spokane also could affect your commute time. Starting today, the left turn lane on southbound Monroe at Maine will be closed. MLK Junior Way will be closed from Trent to Sherman. And Sprague from Scott to Helena will also be closed. There are ways to get around these closures, though. You can check out creme.com for alternate routes. With warmer weather come more motorcycles on the road, so this is a good time to remind drivers to pay closer attention now about sharing the road. Remember, of course, a car, truck, SUV, or van is always going to be bigger than a motorcycle, so keep a safe distance and check your blind spots. So as motorcycle riders, we always need to be aware and say, okay, where should I put my bike that this car can see me best? Or put my headlights so they see me best. Where can I put myself that I'm going to be the safest out here? Because they miss us. They really do. As for bikers, you may want to get a tune-up if your motorcycle has been in storage all winter. Check your tire pressure and fluids and make sure your lights work correctly. And a reminder, Idaho does not require motorcycle riders to wear a helmet, but Washington does. One witness described the scene as a war zone. Several families lost their homes after a fire ripped through one Oregon community. Now that fire started around 1 a.m. Sunday, just south of Portland. The fire started in a construction site and then spread to nearby condos. 20 homes were destroyed, but no one was hurt. Many in the community credit first responders and their neighbors for helping each other to escape. Some neighbors knocked on doors. Others drove around the neighborhood honking their horns to warn people. 
I looked out the window and that place was ablaze. My whole third floor is gone. And I guess everything from the third floor came down to the second floor. So all that's gone. Along with those 20 homes, a construction shack, equipment and about 14 cars and trucks were destroyed. The heat from that fire even melted street lights in the neighborhood. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help the fire victims. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office is now looking into what caused that fire. Well, travelers now have more options when flying on the west side of our state. Painfield and Everett added United Airlines to its commercial passenger service list. The airline started its operations at the new airport shortly after Alaska Airlines. Now between Alaska and United, Painfield offers 24 daily flights. Many people say the new addition is making traveling a little easier. It makes it so much more handy to get in and out of town and uh, it's, it's uh, kind of a challenge to get the SeaTac back and forth. So this is, this is wonderful. The United will offer six daily flights with service to Denver, Denver rather, and San Francisco. Right now, Alaska Airlines operates 18 daily flights out of Payne Field. Alaska also flies to Portland, several cities in California, and to Nevada and Arizona. Now, Propeller Airports, the company that operates out of Payne Field, expects 600,000 to 700,000 passengers to travel through that airport each year. The city of Spokane is working on a project to revitalize downtown alleyways. Crim 2's Kiera O'Fallon is live this morning to tell us more about the vision of city designers. Good morning, Kiera. Yes, good morning. Well, right now, downtown alleyways are not being used in the way that they could. City designers see a blank canvas full of potential, and now they want to hear your ideas. Now, for the past 10 years, the city has had a policy calling for alleyway activation, and now they are hoping to streamline a process to make this all possible. Right now, the city is in the very beginning stages of this project, gathering ideas to see what can be done with the alleyway space on Railroad, Al Railroad Alley from Cedar to Washington Street and Steam Plant Alley from Cedar to Washington Street with the possibility of reaching Division Street as well. These are just a few images of similar projects in other areas that city staff members have looked at. You can have wonderful activities going on here with alfresco dining and cafe dining and, and uh, park-like improvements. This is still a public way, but you can make those kinds of park-like fun improvements. There's no additional taxpayer expenditure, no additional obligation that's going on. This is just the thing that we want to see happen, that great partnership between private business and public enterprise. Over the last couple of days, local designers, landscape architects, urban designers and artists have been meeting to come up with ideas for these spaces. The city is hoping to involve any business owners, residents or property owners along the alleyways, but also anyone from the general public to share ideas as well. The hope is to have a first Friday event in early May to show ideas and get even more feedback. So stay tuned for that. If all goes as planned, project leaders hope to have a handbook for business and property owners by June to implement some of these ideas in the alleyways. Now for the next two weeks, the city will have a survey up on its website. They're hoping to hear your feedback. For a link to that survey, you can head over to our website at crumb.com. Live in downtown Spokane, Kiara L. Fallen, Crumb 2 News. Kira, thank you so much. April is National Volunteer Month. It's also the start of Spokane's sixth annual Spokane Gives initiative. Now you can celebrate the month of giving by attending today's volunteer fair. The Spokane Public Library will be hosting that fair from 3 till 7 tonight. At the fair, you can find more than 20 different volunteer opportunities in our region. Spokane Gives helps to connect people with different volunteer opportunities. Now, just last year, more than 20,000 people volunteered, creating an impact worth more than $3 million. City leaders say there are opportunities for all ages. Well, the warmer weather means many of us will be spending more time outside and now you can head back to the Japanese garden at Manitou Park. The garden reopens for the season today. It will stay open until October 31st. Now for a short history lesson here, the garden was completed back in 1974. It symbolizes the friendship between Spokane and its sister city in Japan. The park is open daily from 8 a.m. until a half hour before dusk. Beautiful picture there. 509 now on this Monday. Well, what is the one thing that makes you the most scared? This morning, we looked into the top searched fears. And have you been tricked yet this morning? We'll let you know the history behind April Fool's Day and why it may be good for us.
And we're starting off our Monday morning with pretty calm and mild conditions outside, but changes are on the way by about the middle of the week. We'll let you know what those are coming up in your full forecast.